Good afternoon and welcome to our Good Friday meditation service. This year we're going to read Luke's account of the first Good Friday from the trial of Jesus to his burial. We'll begin at Luke chapter 22 verse 67 and go through to the end of chapter 23. You may like to follow it in your own Bible or listen to the words as they are read. The story, in many respects, is simple and yet profound. This is a different Easter from one we may have experienced before, as we are unable to meet together, separated by an invisible infection that could kill at any moment. Yet it is precisely at these times that we need to turn and focus on the certain hope we have in Jesus Christ. Sin is an invisible infection that each one of us has, that will lead to an eternal separation from God. Yet as we reflect on the first Good Friday, we see that God himself would come to redeem us from that emptiness, that separation, and the eternal loneliness. My prayer is that as we turn ourselves to the cross of Christ once again, we'll find strength in knowing his love, in knowing his compassion and mercy, that is extended to us and to the whole world. We have six readings. Each is followed by either a time of silence or song or a thought, all designed to help us meditate on what we have heard. Christian meditation is not an act of emptying one's mind, but filling it with Jesus Christ and his word. So let me encourage you to have the scriptures open before you, to follow it alongside the readings and continue to reflect on it and offer your prayers to God in the silence. It may be that three R's are helpful for you. How does this passage cause you to rejoice? For what should we repent? And what are our requests? Rejoice, repent and request. A poem by James Montgomery. Lord, teach us how to pray aright with reverence and fear. Though dust and ashes in thy sight, we may, we must draw near. We perish if we cease from prayer, O grant us power to pray. And when we meet thee, we prepare, Lord, meet us by the way. God of all grace, we bring to thee a broken, contrite heart. Give what thine eye delights to see, truth in the inward part. Faith in the only sacrifice that can for sin atone, to cast our hope, to fix our eyes on Christ, on Christ alone. Patience to watch and wait and weep, though mercy long delay, Courage our fainting souls to keep, and trust thee though thou slay. Give these, and then thy will be done, thus strengthened with all might. We, through thy Spirit and thy Son, shall pray, and pray aright.
the elders. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, Prophesy! Who hit you? And then they said many other insulting things to him. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, If I tell you, you will not believe me, and if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You say that I am. Then he, they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. We confess our sins together. Loving God, we know that you love us, so we confess that we have let you down. Every day we betray you, deny you, misunderstand you, crucify you. We betray you when we are selfish or unkind. 
we deny you when we do not speak out or are ashamed of your words. We misunderstand you when we justify our actions by misquoting your teaching. We are truly sorry and we wait for the word of your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, betrayed for thirty pieces of silver, deserted by your disciples, denied by Peter, mocked by Herod, scourged by Pilate, crowned with thorns and nailed to the cross, humbly and with all our heart we thank you for your suffering and death, by which we can be certain we have been forgiven and redeemed. Amen. The leaders. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted, he stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence, and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us, as you can see. He has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him, and then release him. But the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city, and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will.
When Jesus gets to Pilate, he is accused of subverting the nation, forbidding payment of taxes to Caesar, and claiming to be Christ, a king. Pilate focuses on the third because Jesus didn't look much like a king. But one of the most striking things is that Pilate keeps on repeating a declaration of innocence. After an initial hearing, he says, I find no basis for a charge against this man. Next, after Herod has sent Jesus back to Pilate, Pilate affirmed, I have found no basis for your charges against him, neither has Herod. Then when the crowd demanded his death, Pilate says, I have found no ground for the death penalty. In Matthew 27, Pilate's wife even warns him to have nothing to do with that innocent man. Finally, he'll wash his hands saying, I'm innocent of this man's blood. Pilate found himself in a tricky position. He knew Jesus was innocent and was wanting to release Jesus, according to Luke 23. But as Mark 15 tells us, he also wanted to satisfy the crowd. He didn't know how to wriggle out. So he tried to shift the responsibility by sending him to Herod. Then he tried to do the right thing, but he offered clemency rather than justice, asking if they wanted Jesus or Barabbas freed, not just releasing the innocent man. He tried half measures with a flogging, and then he just tried to wash his hands of the whole thing. Why was he so weak? Well, in John 19, the crowd are shouting, if you let that man go, you are no friend of Caesar. That was the issue. Pilate had to choose between two kings, Caesar or Jesus. And he chose to side with Caesar and so became an enemy of justice. But it is the last verse that is most striking. In verse 27, he released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. The one they asked for was Barabbas, and he surrendered Jesus to their will. The comparison between Jesus and Barabbas has been made many times before, but it's worth repeating. One was guilty, the other innocent. One had committed murder, the other's death would bring life. The one who deserved punishment was freed because an innocent took his place. The one who deserved death lived because the living one died. I might not be Barabbas or Pilate, and I'm sure you aren't either, but there is far more about them that is like us than we like to admit. We're the guilty ones. We've chosen to side with the crowd and the kings of this world rather than the king of the universe. I'm deserving of punishment and death because of my guilt, yet an innocent one willingly takes my place and through his death I am offered life. So often we cry out for justice from God. It's not justice I need, but mercy.
THE SOLDIERS As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him, and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if the people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots.
The criminals. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others, let him save himself if he's God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. 
Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. And so we pray. Merciful God, you have made all people and hate nothing that you have made. Nor do you desire the death of sinners, but rather that they should be converted and live. Have mercy on all who do not know you or who deny the faith of Christ crucified. Take from them all ignorance, hardness of heart and contempt for your word and bring them home to your fold, blessed Lord, so that we may all become one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Some prayers for the world. O oh God, this year we are under lockdown, unable to gather, fearful and afraid. And yet for parts of your church, it will be no different to their normal experience because this is what life is like for them. 
They face oppression. They are pushed underground and persecuted. Lord God, help us to grasp something of the challenges that they face each day and commit us to praying for our brothers and sisters across the world. And Lord God, we pray that you might give us a real joy at the freedom that we have and that we might use that for the advancement of your kingdom. Amen. Lord, we pray for our own country. We pray for those working at this time to keep us safe and to restore those who are ill, for doctors, nurses, healthcare assistants and many others. We pray for our own government, for the wisdom that they need. And we pray for those who grieve. But supremely, we pray for an awakening in our own land. As we see the frailty of our existence, the powerlessness that we really have, Lord, you are humbling us. You are showing us our need for you. And we ask that you might cause people to turn to you. Lord, may we as a church help people, support people, that they might know Jesus Christ and the love and the forgiveness and the eternal hope that he brings. Amen. The death of Jesus. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this he breathed his last. The centurion Seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breaths and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things.
The Burial of Jesus Now, there is a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. And they went home and prepared spices and perfumes. But they rested on the Sabbath in, in obedience to the command.
Almighty God, as we stand at the foot of the cross of your Son, help us to see and know your love for us, so that in humility, love and joy, we may place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen.